Hi, my name is uh, Gary Bradshaw. I'm uh, 52 years old. And this is actually my first video. Um, why am I doing it? Well, I'm actually having a hip replacement in uh, a couple of days. Uh, and for many people, uh, there's lots of uh, unknowns around procedures such as that. Some people actually frown uh, on using the internet for medical advice, and I've been one of those people in the past, but um, I've actually found it very useful in this case um, for uh, information on YouTube around uh, the hip replacement itself, the surgery, and the, uh, the recovery as well. So I've actually found it a very, very great help. So I've decided to do my, whole, my own, uh, own video. Um, it might be of help for people, it might not. Um, but I'm hoping to do more videos as we go on through the process. And also while in hospital, pain permitting. And also when back at home again, uh, doing the rehab uh, after a few days. Um, but I've always been very sporty and very active. Um, this actually started over, uh, over 10 years ago. Uh, I noticed when actually trying my, uh, my boots when I was playing football, on certainly my right leg, um, my hands actually, I had to go on the inside of my leg to tie the laces rather than putting your hands either side and then and then tying them that way. So it seemed a little bit strange. Uh, but eventually I went to the doctors, um, had an x-ray, uh, but I found actually I had um, chronic arthritis in my right hip. So after um, quite a few physio sessions, um, I did manage to get some sort of exercise done, but still the uh, the restrictiveness and the pain would never really go away. Um, I actually did manage to do um, a Total Warrior assault course in uh, in about August time for my son's uh, stag party, which was uh, no mean feat. And at the end of that, I was I was in sort of quite a lot of pain, but it was a ten k. I managed to get through it. But basically, I think my body has said enough's enough. Um, so now it, it was about time I had to do something something about with my hip because instead of doing an exercise, which I really, really like doing, it was more about quality of life and being able to get around at work in, in general life um, without pain. So that was a thing. So this is where it starts to get interesting um, because um, earlier in the year, um, purely by chance, um, a friend of my wife gave her an article um, from one of the national newspapers, the Daily Mail, about a, a new type of um, hip replacement method uh, that was available. So I actually kept that for reference, but not actually knowing. I'll actually need to uh, look at it so soon, and I'll try and put a link on the uh, the video regarding that uh, that uh, article as well. Basically, the, uh, the method involved is actually called Superpath. Um, and the consultant who actually performs this main one in the UK is a guy called um, Michael Cronin, who uh, is based down at Warwick Hospital. Um, and this article was all around this particular method about being able to get up and running quite quickly after uh, less trauma on the muscles, less invasive on the body, etc., etc. So I actually visited um, every 12 months um, my consultant uh, for my hip replacement uh, in, based in my local town uh, for checkups and x-rays. Uh, and this is the, the most recent one. I actually took the, uh, the articles with me uh, and actually asked him, so how can I get this particular method done? The response I got was a little bit surprising. So rather being rather helpful, um, the consultant was a little bit off in effect with me. Um, and basically said I needed to go back to my GP, um, which is not really what I expected. I thought they would actually be more helpful 
investigate the process. He didn't actually seem like he'd actually heard of the process. And I even thought they might um, arrange an appointment so I could actually look to get um, this uh, procedure looked at. So the end result was I had to go back to my uh, my GP with me the information that I'd, I'd got um, so I could then explore that as a possibility. So in the meantime, I actually discovered that the, uh, the surgeon that did my wife's friend's uh, hip replacement, he actually did a, a similar method to the superpath, which again was uh, less invasive than the normal method that had used historically. So it was getting quite interesting now because um, as far as I was concerned, you only had a hip replacement and I wasn't aware there was different um, techniques and methods to actually do the surgery. So I was actually quite wrong uh, as you know, knowledge is a great thing. So on with this, uh, this, uh, this information, the, the newspaper articles and the name of the surgeon that, uh, that had performed the operation on my, my wife's friend. I went back to my GP and passed on that information. They were actually quite surprised that I'd done so much research. This is actually one of the great things we have now with the NHS, which is patient's choice. Um, and as far as I understand it, basically you in effect, you can pick your surgeon and uh, have your operation done where that surgeon operates. So basically you have control. I did actually think about using um, Michael Cronin down at Warwick, but logistically for travel and family etc, that would have been an absolute nightmare. So I decided to go with the one who'd had good reports, who did my wife's friend. So my GP actually sent a referral letter to that surgeon requesting they actually do the operation. And then once that was sent, basically, it was time to wait and uh, see what came back. The letter actually came back quite uh, quickly from the uh, consultant um, saying they would in effect accept the case. Um, so I was given an appointment on the um, 12th of January uh, 2017. So I actually attended the, uh, the consultation with the, uh, the surgeon. Um, he did another x-ray and oh, even though I'd had one done uh, a couple of months earlier with my, uh, my local consultant. But he did actually say that um, it was time to do the operation because my hip joint was basically bone on bone and there was no, no cartilage left in the joint whatsoever. So now the second thing that's great about the NHS is not only do you have your choice of, of who you want to do your operation, but they do have deadlines to work to. So it's great for us as, as patients and people waiting for operations, but probably not so good for them as they have to, they have to meet the deadlines. Um, so after seeking the, uh, seeing the consultant and he agreed to do the replacement, in effect, the, the clock starts ticking and they have to deliver. So as it stands, certainly for me, um, the replacement has to be done from 12 to 18 weeks after the consultation. And that's great for me as, uh, as I do actually part project management as part of my job. So that's what I've treated this as. It's a project in effect to get my hip replaced with milestones I can chase. So my advice in this case is, is manage it like a project. Ask the staff, what's the next step? When do you have to do that by? Get the deadlines from them and the dates so that you can check the status. And that's what I've done. One thing was very, very uh, apparent, as I mentioned earlier on, I didn't really re realize there was different methods to do hip operations. I've already said the super path one, which is the one that I think the, in effect, seems to be the Rolls Royce of hip replacements. It's minimally invasive but there's a limited number of consultants who actually can do that. It's, uh, it's done um, very similar to the second one, which I'm, I'm hoping to have done, which is the anterior approach, which is done in effect, the, the front side of the hip. Again, minimally invasive through sort of a, a small scar, typically this sort of size, they operate through. But that is, according to my surgeon, dependent on how easily he can move my, my leg when I'm under anaesthetic. The other approach is, is uh, the, uh, the posterior approach, which is typically done through the, uh, the back of the glute muscles, but what they actually do is actually cut down the, the length of the muscle rather than across, so there's a lot less damage through that muscle. And again, the recovery times with all these now compared to what I believe a few years ago, 
is a lot, lot better. There's even probably more methods that I'm not aware of, um, but certainly this is good information when you're looking for a hip replacement. So being on with this information, my surgeon has agreed to do the anterior approach. And again, like I said, providing my leg moves enough for him when I'm under uh, anaesthetic. So it should allow me to re recover quicker. And he's also said, thankfully for me, after having this done and rehab and following the steps, he's not going to put any restrictions on me whatsoever in terms of sport. So for me, absolutely fantastic news. So what's next? Well, since the appointment with the... Uh, the consultant it's a waiting game I did actually have every intention of doing some uh, muscle strengthening work and I have done tried to do a little bit around my hip to uh, to strengthen it up for after the operation however it's it, it is really like my body said no you're not doing any more of this now you can forget it and uh, I think whether it's subconscious or physically the, the hip does actually feel like it's got steadily worse walking has got more painful and actually, in fact, in effect, I do actually dread having to walk anywhere. Before your operation, um, you do have a, a pre-operation pre -operation assessment. Um, and that's obviously arranged before your surgery. Uh, what, what I did, again, managing it as a project, trying to always bring in deadlines if you can, is I, rather than wait for the 12 weeks to elapse, I rang after about five, week five or six to ask what date my pre-op was likely to be. So really, to my surprise, they actually said that they could actually do the operation early in March. So in effect, I'm having my operation on week nine, which is about three weeks earlier than what they really have to do. So again, it's a thing I can recommend doing. Call and see if the appointment can be brought in. In, our, in effect, I've, I, I believe I've had a... Um, a slot that somebody's had an operation they've actually cancelled so again I, I believe I'm lucky but it's always worth doing I've had the pre-op done uh, which is all about giving bloods checking you well enough to have the surgery blood pressure etc and now we're at the big day so I know I'm going to be a little bit nervous but I really really can't wait I'll be in pain I know I will however the pain will be good pain but it's going to be improving pain so hopefully the next video I'll do will probably be a video from the hospital after the operation. Hope you like the video. If you do, please like it, 